All right, we're here with uh, Clay Shannon, who's the uh, owner of uh, Shannon Ridge Vineyards and Winery. And uh, we're over here in the Clear Lake Oaks area in his uh, Cabernet Vineyard. And uh, Clay's engaged in an interesting project using sheep in the vineyard. And he's going to tell us a little bit about it as we take a look around. Clay. Hey, Brian. How you doing? Good, man. So we're at about 2,300 feet in elevation. This is one of our Cabernet Vineyards that goes into our Shannon Ridge uh, Cabernet that's nationally distributed and uh, our top-selling item. We do about 15,000 cases of this thing, and it's grown at about 30% per year. But, uh, you know, we, we, you've probably heard before that we, we raised some sheep, and we, we started really small, and, and now we're kind of getting bigger, and we're getting into grass-fed lamb. But uh, we've been sheeping the vineyards after harvest uh, to clean up the vineyard, to clean up the grapes uh, underneath the vines after the, uh, the, the guys maybe drop a little bit of fruit, or if you're machine harvesting, the, the machine leaves a little bit of fruit. So we usually run the sheep in the vineyards after harvest. And then, uh, and this year we're going to start lambing the, uh, the the sheep in the vineyards, and so they're cleaning, keeping the weeds weed free, uh, um, pr pretty much throughout the year. But as we get smarter and as we experiment with these sheep, what I wanted to show you today is is, is what we are doing. We're currently pulling leaves with these things, and uh, we're learning how to manage the sheep to keep them from eating the fruit. And uh, what the, what you're looking at here is a Cabernet vineyard that has not been leaf pulled at all. Uh, it's kind of on the bigger side this year and due to some late rains and uh, some deep soils, late rains and, and not extremely hot. Um, East-west rows usually uh, burn up a little bit more or more, less water, so they're a little bit more vigorous than our north-south rows. But you can see, I don't know if you can see here, but the canopy is very dense this year. And if you start opening up the canopy in the fruit zone right in here, you'll see some yellow leaves and those are signs of, of, of you know, potential negative quality, potential shading, or for sure shading, and we don't want that. Uh, and what we're gonna do is dro drop a, uh, run across the avenue here and we're gonna show you what the sheep are doing. When we bring in the, uh, uh, we do this with hand crews also, but there's a lack of labor in California. We, we've all been reading and hearing about that, but you know, to hand leaf, which we'll show you later, is probably 250 to 300 bucks an acre when you add supervision, manpower, water, shade, all these things we have to do. 250 bucks, 300 bucks an acre to really do a good job of, of leafing. When we take the sheeping thing over here, which is across, uh, we're spending probably $30, $20 an acre. And frankly, I think they're doing a better job. Let's go have a look. Check it out. Okay, Brian, so hey, we just crossed the avenue. You can see over there, I mean, we just moved 50 feet. Here's a block that was sheeped here last night. Um, and you could see yellow leaves, okay? Well, the reason why you're seeing yellow leaves is because the dark green large basal leaves have been removed from the outside of the canopy. And now we're looking on the inside of the canopy. And guess what we see hanging here? Fruit. That means the, the sheep have exposed this to the sunlight. Um, it's not the cleanest job in the world. You'll go in certain areas, you'll find a much cleaner job. But the key here is yellow leaves. It's not what you want to see but uh, it is what you want to see after you've uh, pulled the external leaves because these, some of these will green back up again and then all of a sudden we've exposed all this fruit. We can see the other row, we can see the dirt through the other side, that means our canopy is open and, uh, and now we, I think we can grow some great fruit with uh, non-veggie herbal, uh, we want a little bit of herbal in the Cabernet, but non-veggie Cabernet characters. Um, again, I think there's a 20 or $30 an acre uh, uh, pass uh, the sheep start and they eat all the little suckers that are regrown then we prune them off later they eat these these young regrown shoots that we really shouldn't have there but this year again we've had a lot of extra vigor and uh, due to the late rains and notice they'll, they'll clean all those leaves and petioles right up they expose the fruit so we can uh, uh, get our sunlight in there and get the air in there so we don't have mildew issues they also are cleaning up any little uh, summer annual weed growth that has started to come underneath the drip uh, irrigation. Um, right now we're running about 75 to 100 uh, sheep per acre on this, 8 foot rows, east-west rows. Um, we're trying to fine tune exactly what we're doing as far as how many sheep per acre and how much time. And um, we are running at about a 24 hour. So we, so we've Let's say we put 100 sheep per acre. We got 300 sheep on this block, so we have three acres, and in 24 hours or a little bit less, that is completed leafing, just like this. Some some vines a little cleaner than others. Some not as, as but it's opening up. Bottom line, open up the fruit zone. The sheep run up and down the rows. 
they uh, uh, are, are cleaning up the basil leaves. The basil leaves must be fresh and full of sugar. Uh, the reason is because they, they, they wag their little tails when they're, when they're eating this stuff. So it's got to be good, good, uh, uh, pro, uh, good food for them. And they're going to gain weight on that also, uh, the lambs will. Um, but what's really interesting, you know, on a north-south row and on an east-west row, uh, you really want to pull leaves on the cool side of the vine. And what's totally interesting, that's where the sheep hang out. And uh, they, you know, just in another hour or two, the sun will be up and all of a sudden this will start getting shaded over here. So the sheep will work the north side of this vine because it's in the shade the majority part of the day um, more than the south side, which is exactly how we would normally pull leaves. And it's just, it's unbelievable. It's automatic. It's just very cool. So what, why don't we go take a look at some sheep, and then we'll look and show you where we've done some hand leafing. You tell me. You make the, you make the call. Sounds good. Okay, Clay, tell us where we are now. Hey, Brian. Um, so what, what, we're on the Augulin Vineyard, and this is, uh, uh, again, goes back into our Shannon Ridge uh, um, Cabernet program. North-south rows, and this is where we've hand le leafed. So what you do see um, is you know, the, the, the dry leaves or the drying leaves on the ground. You see the fruit zone. And uh, we didn't go very high on here because we're a little bit more concerned about sunburn. So we, we kind of leave a little umbrella underneath the fruit. But uh, again, this is 200, 250 bucks an acre probably here. When we go a little higher, 250 to 300 dollars an acre in cost. Um, the leaves are in a form that they're not necessarily. I mean, it, it's uh, um, it's it's garbage on it, or it's not garbage, but it, it's not necessarily edible or, or available to the plants. And you know where the sheep will eat that leaf, digest it. Um, poop it out and it becomes you know immediately um, as soon as we get some rain um, a, a, a portion of the fertility that we're using but you could see um, you know the, the guys that are leafing guys and gals that are leafing are just again in this fruit zone a little bit lower leafing we call this a lower leafing but the cost difference is huge also you'll notice there's a few grapes on the ground we knock a few grapes on the ground when we're doing it by hand if you go look at the sheep they knock a few grapes on the ground it, um, we think that we're getting maybe a little bit better, um, kind of a dirtier type of leafing, which is what we want. We don't want it clean um, uh, with the sheep. Some areas are a little bit better, some are a little uh, not. But there's, if you can see, you saw more fruit over where the sheep were, and uh, uh, then we're seeing right here for a heck of a lot less cost. Great. Okay, here we are. This is Raul. And this is Charlie. Charlie's a livestock guard dog in training. We got another uh, dog out here. Her name is uh, Rose, right? Sí. Yeah, Rose is out here also. So we run uh, livestock guard dogs. This prevents us from, or prevents the need of hunting coyotes, trapping coyotes, and, and doing all, and bears. Uh, so what we do is we run these dogs with uh, about one dog to two dogs to, for 300 head of sheep. We use electric fencing, mesh fencing, and so we don't have coyote problems. Uh, we don't have bear problems and we keep these dogs and we run them with the sheep, but what Raul's doing here, he's the herder and he basically moves these sheep, uh, you know, when they're resting and it's the heat of the day, he leaves them alone, but when they start to congregate in a certain area in the vineyard, they'll actually start to do some damage and eat some fruit and we don't want that. So he kind of just, you know, maybe throws a pebble behind him or moves his hands or whatever and, and just, he gets them moving. He keep, the key is keep the sheep eating fresh food, fresh leaves. We just moved him to this area this morning, and uh, he's setting up the water here. That's that's a problem. I mean, so we got to have a water tank, and we have some water here. And uh, um, Charlie, um, who has a dirty nose, has been inside these water things all day, uh, these water troughs all morning. And uh, uh, well, what, this is we just put the sheep in here about 6 a.m. And you can see the first pass. We're gonna go look. They're on the top of the hill there. The first pass, they just kind of eat the suckers and the regrowth, and then they start getting their feel for the block and, and, move, and just munching away, munching away the, the woolly compost machines. <laughs> Let's go check them out. Uh, they're starting to lay down if we can see them here, but we got about 300 head in here. There's, a, there's about 100 uh, uh, young lambs, and there's about 200 uh, oh, two, two year old, three year old ewes that are pregnant, uh, hopefully pregnant, and they're going to start lambing. This is our this is our first group, so the, these guys will start lambing probably about the 5th of October. And we're going to lamb them right in the vineyard, uh, hopefully in some Sauvignon Blanc and some uh, maybe some Syrah vineyard, stuff that's that's hopefully harvested by the 5th of October. Um, so they're going to, you know, 
we, we like things to do to be natural so we, uh, uh, rather than putting them in a lambing barn and having uh, circulation issues with the air and things like that if it gets really cold we'll move them down into the oak uh, uh, the oak woodlands and we'll lamb them there if it gets rainy and cold like it did last year and then snowy we put them in the barn and make some makeshift uh, shelter for them but uh, um, we have right now about 500 breeding ewes we have about 14 rams. Uh, we run, run mainly Polype, Panama, and Rambouillet cross. And uh, we use Suffolk and Suffolk Hampshire and, and Cordell uh, bucks or rams. Um, ultimately, what creates uh, lambs that grow fast and, and put good meat on their bones uh, quickly um, in these kind of conditions with this kind of food source. Um, what's interesting is a lot of these sheep are out of Idaho and Utah, and uh, they're used to eating brush. And uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, the, the, the California sheep versus the, uh, uh, the Idaho sheep. The California sheep wants his, uh, his pate and a glass of wine. And uh, uh, the Utah and Idaho sheep wants uh, a burger and fries and a beer. And uh, bottom line, these sheep from out of the area eat and do a better job and grow better on the forbs and the grapevine leaves and the grapes and the and the little bits of clover and starts thistle that we have. It's a, uh, it's, it's, you just wouldn't believe it. I mean, I got a hundred head of sheep here that we brought up on the ranch uh, years ago from via alfalfa, and, and at one point we uh, grained the sheep. We don't do that. We haven't done that for years. But uh, they won't, they won't eat near what these other sheep uh, would call a delicacy from the mountains. Well, Clay, uh, you know, obviously we've touched on this in, in these segments, but. This is an ongoing process with exploring how to achieve sustainability, right? I mean, it's a it's a it's a work and and a, a project in process always. Yeah, I think it's an evolution. I mean, you know, for every action, there's a reaction. For every reaction, there's an action, and uh, I, I think we're starting to learn some of the tools we can use. Uh, the s sustainability is, uh, is is an evolution. You know, first off, we got to stay in business and and feed each other's families and. Uh, Secondly, we got to grow uh, crops with uh, softer fungicides and, uh, and and that are a lot more people friendly and dog friendly and kid friendly. And um, I just think we're starting to learn more and more uh, tools that we can use and uh, be sustainable in business, be sustainable farming, and and uh, you know protect the uh, the environment we live in. All right, Clay. So we're uh, back here with the the sheep lounging around and. What's going on? So it's uh, about uh, 10 minutes before 9 on uh, August uh, something, 4 or 5, I don't know what day Five, it is. 5, I think. Try not to pay attention. Uh, it's pre-harvest, but uh, any of the sheep have obviously had their breakfast and they're laying in the shade. Some of them are still nibbling around. Um, they'll hang out here until that sun gets a little taller, a little higher in the air, and then they'll go and they'll go for another walk and they run up and down these rows. and. Uh, um, uh, you'll, you're looking at some speckled faced sheep, uh, some ewe lambs that we uh, 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 have held back here. Or no, these are these are these these are just ewe lambs and uh, weather lambs that uh, that we've held back um, and haven't sold uh, or harvested yet. And um, they're going to become the lamb chops here pretty soon. But uh, again, you can look down there, just kind of hanging out. But they're not doing much right now at all. They're chewing their cud and uh, and uh, creating some wonderful fertilizer. But uh, they clean up the weeds. Um, we are minimizing herbicide. We are minimizing uh, mowing, which minimizes dust, which minimizes fossil fuels. And there's just a whole bunch of great stuff that's going on here. And uh, bottom line, I, it's just really exciting. It's new. You know, I've been farming grapes for 30, 30 some years. And uh, uh, this is, you know, puts a smile on my face because it's new and it's challenging. And we're learning something. Not that I know it all, but, uh, you know, some of the stuff you. Uh, that you, that you do gets a little bit, uh, you know, sometimes you do, it gets boring once in a while, and this is new. This is new. This is fun. Thanks a lot, Clay. I appreciate it. All right.